welcome, welcome, welcome. So you found out a script, a Python script that might solve a problem you have. Now what do I do with it? How do I get this to run? Um, uh, welcome, I'm glad to uh, have you here with me. My name is Alexis Brignoni and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about the basics, the pure basics of uh, what to do with a Python script when you have something for digital forensics, maybe incident response, and you need to run it. And you know nothing about P Python, you know nothing about how to run scripts, okay? So I'm going to take you to my Windows desktop and so we can start working on that. So this, uh, this exercise, this need, came from uh, a request that some students had uh, of Heather Mahalik of you know, resources on how to deal with this type of uh, scripts, how to deal with them. And, you know, I get it. I get it. Um, the first time I had to deal with a uh, script and the command line, it's pretty scary. <laughs> I'll, I'll accept that. It takes some time to work through those things. So today we're going to start that process. How are we going to start working through it? So let me open a command line and don't be scared. We're going to go through everything step by step. Let me make this a little bit uh, uh, larger here so we can see it a little bit better. I think this should be good enough. Okay, so, all right, yeah, I think it's pretty good. All right, so again, so we have an issue, we have a problem. Let's say, you know, it's a matter of an example that, you know, we needed an iOS log events and properties parser, right? We need a, an iOS uh, image and we're gonna kind of look at it with some tools. And then you, you come across, and again, I'll use my own scripts, you know, as the sake of the example. You come across this iLib thing, and you're like, okay, so um, what is this, right? So this is GitHub, and uh, a lot of folks use uh, GitHub to share their code with the community. The first thing you'll notice here is the top part is kind of the code, a section of the different things you can find in those scripts. And then below it is the readme, and this is really important. This tells you about the program, it tells you, or the scripts, tells you about, you know, maybe a blog post like I have here, gives you details on how it works and different things it does, all right? Now, take into, a, into account a few things. First here, so what do you need to start? Look, it, need, it says you need, you need Python 3.7.4 or higher, and then it says ideally 3.9, and it tells you why. And then it tells you need to do some install some dependencies and it tells you some things here and you might be like I don't have no idea what the heck this is <laughs> and that's okay we're gonna we're gonna go through it I'll be straight with you sometimes you don't even need to understand this just to get something going um, some folks myself included we try to go here on the releases section here on the right maybe you can see my point in there and if you press on releases you will see all the versions of the program right different versions and you'll notice here that it has some executables. At least mine has Windows executable. Depending on the developer, they might put executables for other platforms, Mac or Linux or you know, you name it. In mine, I have Windows, uh, the Windows executable. You can download this and just run it like any executable. Just press on it, click it, and you're ready to go. The drawback is that um, this might not be the latest version. Maybe the latest version of the software is by running the scripts directly, which is what we're gonna do today and what we're going to learn. Uh, again, be aware, this is only for Python. There's many other types of scripts uh, from other programming languages, okay? Uh, Perl, uh, C Sharp, C++, Java, you name it. And they'll have different ways of getting those to run in your system. So I'm not going to worry about those. Today's only Python, okay? So the first thing we need to do is get Python, right? And as we read here, it said, okay, 3.74 or higher. So what do we do? We go to the python.org website, and that's where the Python par, um, interpreter, you can get the interpreter. And the interpreter, what you do is you install it, and it will you know, run the script for you and show you the results or whatever you need, okay? So it's fairly straightforward. You go to downloads, and you can see all releases and for different platforms and get what you need. In our scenario, we're going to use Python 3.9, the latest version, because my script recommends that you go Python 3.9. Be aware that there's some limitations, not limitations, some differences here. Python 3 is not compatible with Python 2. 
So if you come across a script that requires Python 2, you will need the interpreter for Python 2. And uh, you know you will need to uh, call it if you have, like you can have two interpreters together, might be some confusion there, um, but there's ways of addressing that. The important part for us today is to know that you need to download the Python that you need and you should be good. In my case, 3.9 is fine and, and we can get that. So you download it and I have it right here on my desktop. I'm gonna double click on it. Important, very important. You see here on the bottom, app Python 3.9 to path. You need to click this. And why do we do this? The reason to do this is that if I add it to the path, to the Windows path, I can call Python from any command line, you know, terminal window that I need. And it doesn't make sense to you, it will make sense in a second. But you need to do this, okay? Remember, we want to learn what's happening behind the scenes when we're trying to do things on our systems, right? And it would be good if you're not familiar with Windows paths and how does it, uh, it work, that you start Googling some of that, okay? Applications, Windows path, stuff like that, okay? Um, yeah, so we're gonna go into that in a second. So let's install it. Yes, I wanna install it. And just wait for a few seconds. I might need to open the command line window again. Let's 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 see. It's gonna take a few seconds. All right. So the next step is we have it all installed, and then we need to check if you know if we can you know reach it from our command lines, right? If if we selected the path, add to path, we should be able to select it from the command line, or you know call the interpreter from the command line. Again, I'm not, I think I might need to reopen this, so instead of guessing, let's just reopen it when this is done. All right, let's wait a little bit more. There we go, so this is fine. Let's see, let's try this again. Resize this a little bit. If I could grab the edge here. <laughs> uh, there we go. All right, all right, all right, so let's see. So what you need to do is you're gonna just type here on your command line just Python minus minus version and see what we get. Perfect. So we're we're rolling, right? So now we have Python 3.92 installed. You see that? So if you see this in your system, we're in good shape. We got uh, Python installed, and that should not be our problem. Okay. What's the next step? So let's go back and to our GitHub page where our code lives. So you say, okay, so I got Python 3.9 as the, uh, let me highlight it here, as we have here that we need. We got it. But before we do anything else, we need the code. So the code is gonna be, you're gonna get it pressing the code button here. You're gonna press it, download zip, which the zip, which I will do right now. It will download it. Give it a few seconds so it completes this thing. There we go. I'm gonna open this file. And I'm gonna put it here on the desktop for the time being. So I'm gonna uncompress it real quickly. And we're gonna explore the contents uh, here for a few for a few seconds. All right. So let me minimize this. What do we have here? So when we go here and we get the script, this is pretty much the same thing you will see on the page here on at the. Uh, on your GitHub page. Same thing, folders, different scripts in Python, scripts scripts, and with the .py extension, okay? What you want to do is you want to navigate your command line uh, terminal or window to this folder where the scripts are, okay? So uh, let me see where I'm at. All right, let's go to the desktop. And we're gonna go to, uh, where is it? I'll leave master and let's see what's in it. Perfect. Okay, so now I am in the same, uh, my, my command line is in the same window as my, uh, my scripts. All right, so let's go back to the instruction here, the readme. So what else does it say? Okay, it says I need to install some dependencies, which I'll show you how to do that in a second, okay? 
And then it tells me the usage, and this is really important. It tells you how you're gonna run the script, right? CLI, command line interface, you're gonna call the interpreter, and I know it's a little bit smaller here, but um, you know, hopefully you can see it from there. You're gonna call the script, ilib.py, and then all the different arguments it has, okay? This is a standard thing when you deal with um, command line programs. Okay, and uh, this is not something that's just limited to Python. Okay, there's these arguments, the T, and it tells you it accepts zip, tar, fs, gc, itunes, minus i, which is, you're gonna write next the path to the extraction, minus o, it's kinda obvious, right, input, and then minus o for output, path to report output, okay? In my set of scripts, I also added a separate entry point called GUI, Graphical User Interface. And what you need to do all is call the GUI and that's it. You will find other scripts where there's a GUI option that you can ac access as an argument. There might be an argument maybe called uh, minus G. <laughs> it would call the GUI, right? So remember, you need to look at the usage to know how to use the script. Now, that being said, we haven't um, taken into account the all the prerequisites, right? We need to install certain dependencies. So I'm gonna try to run the program without the dependencies and see what happens, okay? Just for sake of you know testing it out. So we're gonna call Python. We're gonna call iLeap or iLeap script and hit it and see what happens. So what happens? Notice this. And this will help you learn how to troubleshoot um, these type of errors. You will see there's a problem here on the iLeap script, right, in line four, and it's calling something. <laughs> and that's something, you go all the way back to the, uh, all the way to the end, it tells you, module not found error. It hasn't found the module named simple KML. So that's the problem. It's trying to find a module that's not there. This lets me know, as a Python developer or user, that I need to install something called simple KML. Do those errors that you see there will be modules or libraries that you need, okay? So let's go back here to the, um, to the GitHub page. And it is a, uh, it's good form if you're a Python developer to add to your scripts or collection of scripts a requirements.txt uh, document. It's not required, but it's good form. When you press it, it will tell you, when you open it and look at it, that you know it will tell you what are the things or the modules or libraries that you need to run the script. Because if you don't install them, you will get errors like this. So let's open it. And you see a list here, and it's kind of small. Maybe maybe we use the, uh, we open it from actual here. Uh, it looks just as small. <laughs> let's make it larger real quick. Um, all right, we can just zoom in, right? Where is the control what? Control. Plus, so let's do that, control plus. There we go, much better, right? So look at the different libraries or modules that it needs, and you notice here that this, this is the one that, when I try to run the uh, script without it, look, it tell me, oh, you need simple KML. There you go, right? So we need to install those, which we're gonna do shortly. Before we move away from this section, notice how some of these will tell you, look, this, module or library, I want precisely this version, okay? From this one, I want precisely this version. From this one, I want a version that's one, well, this one or higher, the same or higher than this one, right? So you can really get some good granular granularity. Uh, <laughs> sorry for butchering the English language, but a lot of detail in regards to what type of libraries you need and the versions of, of them. These libraries leave, li live outside of your computer in a server, and we're gonna bring them in, okay? And this is important to kind of figure out, or keep track of that, look, this is how this works, now you know how to read it, okay? So now, how do we um, install these? Okay, so the hard way is by saying pip, which is the Python install packager, if I'm not mistaken, pip install and say I want simple KML. I hit enter, and I can do that, and it will install it. But as you might have seen, <laughs> my script has a lot of 
libraries. And I don't want to add them one by one, one by one, one by one. So we're going to leverage the fact that the developer was nice enough to leave us, which is me, <laughs> left us the requirements.txt file here. So we're going to install all of these in one soup by just calling this document. Um, I'm going to make a quick pause here. I know this sounds complex. I know, but because I'm giving a lot of explanations, but it's not that hard. At the end, I'm going to kind of recap the whole process, um, and you'll, you'll, you'll see how easy it is. All right, so let's do that. How do I do it? So I'm going to go, and in case you didn't know, the readme, I put in my readme, and, and you know developers might do that. It tells you this is the command you're going to use, pip install, <coughs> sorry, minus r requirements.txt. R for recursive. I want to go through all the items in the text document to install. Minus R requirements.txt. I'm going to press it. And what you'll see is it starts, you know, going to the different uh, library locations and starts just pulling down everything that we need. So instead of having to go pip install each one of them one by one, we'll just bring it down. There we go. And uh, sometimes you will get a Python script that has no requirements that uh, TXT document. So, you know, no need to sweat it. If, it. if the error that you're seeing it says, you know, no module found and the name of the module that it needs, well, most likely what you need to do is just go ahead, okay, pip install and whatever the module name is, and that should take care of that problem. Awesome. So installing a whole bunch of different things that the scripts leverage to do whatever uh, work it does. So we need to wait for a few minutes there. Perfect. All right. Let me put this over here. Well, that is running, and you'll just let it run. Um, let me go back to the README. So it tells me how to run the dependencies and uh, the command line usage. So. I'm going to show you the graphical user interface first because it's the easy one, and then we'll try to do it from the command line, which is a little bit, you know, it's more intimidating, but it's not. All right, so this is done. You see this warning, you are using PID version, blah, blah, blah. You need, you know, there's a newer one. And, you know, that's something that you should do, right? It tells you how to upgrade it, upgrade the packager. This is not going to affect your program or your scripts. It's fine. But if you see this kind of yellow warning, you can just put, you know, your command line Python, exe, you know, write all this stuff all the way to, you know, upgrade pip, and, uh, you know, it, would, uh, it will upgrade it. Right. But we're not going to do that now. So everything is installed. We're good to go. Let's now, uh, like I said, let's uh, execute the uh, graphical user interface. And I know that because I read the readme and said, okay, GUI, call this, Python ilibgui.py. So, so let's, let's do that. command line, there we go, so Python, alib GUI, and let's, let's, let's run it, let's see what happens, so it's doing its thing, it's running, and there we go, bam, that's your script, and you can just you use it, right, it's a graphical user interface, you browse for files, get your extraction, or you know, do, do whatever, you know, the script will do whatever it does, and you know, this is nice, it has the command line functionality. Right, so I'm going to close it because this is not an I an, an iLeap, <laughs> how to use iLeap video. It's how to run Python scripts video. So that's fine. This worked. Perfect. Now what happens if I try to call the, uh, the non-graphical interface? So if I just call it without any arguments, without putting anything after it, it will tell me that, you know what? I need some, you know, an output folder. I need different things. And it gives you a little clue of, how to operate this command line script, right? It tells me, you know, the minus H for help, and then the switch or the argument T, argument O, argument I, argument P, right? And, uh, you know, and how that works. So let's do, let's do the help. Let's see what happens with if I put minus H. If we do minus H, we will have all the things that you can do with the script. You have here the, you know, iOS logs events and plist parser, and then the help, minus T for input type, right? Minus O for output, minus I for input, and minus P 
which you know you don't really care about this. <laughs> All right, so let's run it from the command line and see how that how would that work. So I'm gonna write Python. M um, the script, of course, ILE minus what? Minus t. So I have. Do I have it here? Yes. No, I do not actually have it. Um, let me get it real quick. I need an extraction because w without an extraction, I can do nothing. So hopefully, I can do this real quick. Let me get an extraction real quick from somewhere else. <laughs> oh, I can't. I'm in your own account. All right, that's that's no problem. We can uh, we can take care of that. Let's uh, let's do something here real quick. Let's hit the pause button, and I'll be back with the uh, with the extraction, and then we can continue. Okay, and we're back. All right, so I got the extraction right here that we need. You know, the, an input that my script needs, right? In my case, it's an iOS extraction, but for sake of you know, extra the exercise. All right, so <clears throat> so what do I need? So I have a tar file, and I know that. Look at the extension. So I'm gonna tell it, yeah, I'm gonna feed you a tar file. Then I'm gonna say, okay, input. Where is it? So it's right here on my desktop. So I'm just gonna drop it here. Oops, I need I, I need to make sure that I have a space here. Okay, there we go. That's where we're gonna go, right? And then the output. Where do I want my output to be? Right, minus O output path. So we're gonna just use, uh, you know. Let's use the same, uh, it should be fine. I'm just gonna use the same directory, right? Oops, there we go, on the desktop. All right, what else do we need? I think that's it. So notice, I have, I call Python the interpreter, I call the script, and I follow the arguments as instructed here on the help. So the, the, the T for input type, tar, input, path and the output path so um, I think we're good let's hit let's hit go and the script is just executing as, as it, it would ex execute you can see here that a report folder is being created and whatnot so at this point you let the program run so let's do a, a quick summary of what we learned and you know it's a little a long video but I wanted to show you in detail that you don't need to be afraid of Python scripts that you can leverage the, this functionality in your cases and it's not complicated. What do you need? Number one, you need Python. Python 2 or Python 3, depends on what the scripts require. And I show you where to get it. You go to python.org and download what you need. After that, you make sure if you're in a Windows system to install it and add the checkbox for paths. Don't overlook that. It's really, really important. After that is done, then you're going to look at the, uh, the documentation and see, okay, do I have any prerequisites? What do we need? Well, I might need some, uh, install some libraries. Look for the requirements.txt uh, document. And use pip install minus r requirements.txt to install. If for some reason that requirements.txt document is not there, run the script. And if it tells you it needs a module, then go one by one. Pip install module name. Run it again. Oh, another one. Pip install module name. And keep going until you get them all. <laughs> all right? And then after that, um, you know, look at again, look at the usage. If it's a command line type of interface and it has a switch or argument for a graphical user interface, try that out. And if it doesn't, then um, call the script minus H or minus help and uh, read through it. And it will tell you what uh, you need to do to be able to run the program execute uh, successfully. In the one that I saw here, one that I made, uh, it has certain things you need to provide to it. The type of extraction, input output folder, and as you can see, it's just off to the races now. It's just doing what it needs to do, and you get you know, the benefit of the coding from the developer that did this you know, for the purposes that you might need. So I hope this has helped. Um, I'm gonna pause the video because I wanna show you the kind of the output since I'm already running it. <laughs> show you the output, so let's give it a, a few seconds and I'll come back uh, when it's done. All right, so the script is done. It tells you that I took five minutes. Now, you know, every script will behave differently. The, the thing what we not wanna look at is the end here. You know you're done when it gives you the prompt back, back to where you need to be. So, and then you go and you can look at the output and you know, look at whatever your script generated. In my case, it generates different outputs. But again, hopefully this was helpful. 
hopefully this gave you an idea of how do you go about running Python scripts and leveraging that for your own purposes. Uh, any questions, hit me up in the comments, uh, Twitter, and uh, I'll see you next time.